Hello everybody and welcome back to Insomnia True Silver Championship 2nd Edition. My name is Nimshin, I'm here with Raven and Noxious and we are ready to start Group D. Yes. And it's not Group of Death, but it's still a very good group with a lot of great players. So who do we have in Group D? We have Tyus, uh, Xixo and Kalman going to be playing in the last matches today. So the first one will be, of course, the winner's match and then whoever loses this one will end up facing off against Sixo, who already beat Penny in Group D earlier today. Yeah, hey, what happened to Penny? It's gone. It's actually yeah, she, she's gone. Yeah, she, she didn't get revenge. Yeah, she didn't get revenge on Tice or, or Six, so unfortunately. So, so it's thought uh, for Penny. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really sad that Penny got eliminated because I <laughs> I did talk to her and she wanted to to play versus Tice. She wanted to play versus Six, so yeah. And she did get that dream fulfilled, but unfortunately she got eliminated. But hopefully we'll see more pe uh, more of Penny in the future. She did go through the Swiss format on day one, so a pretty yep. good achievement. Yeah, it was a really impressive run. I think she yeah, it was really good. But with the first match is going to be Tice versus Camlin, though, so it's going to be pretty interesting. Everyone knows Tice. Yep. Uh, obviously, one of the G2 members of the uh, and the life coach is still in. Unfortunately, I think yep. got knocked Top out. Eight. Uh, so the return champion won't be here to, uh, to take this take this uh, cup again. But Camlin's a really good player, actually. That not a lot of people have heard of. I cast him in the WCA uh, European qualifier, right. and he took some very interesting decks as well. I don't know if that's still going to stick and whether he's still playing sort of funky decks. But I remember he took like a Mech Druid. Mech Druid. Yeah, or at least like a half Mech Druid uh, to the tournament. And he, he performed really well, he qualified, so. Well, it's definitely worth mentioning that uh, his team, Flo, uh, they had three players in the top 16. Johnny Stone uh, eliminated and two beers eliminated, unfortunately. But Camden is still there and then uh, trying to represent the team. And Johnny Stone brought this weird mage deck that uh, we've seen, which was like a Reno, a removal. You know, Freeze-ish, yeah. grinder mage. I, like, I don't even That's know really catchy name, I like it. it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Reno Freezes Grinder Mage. It's, it's got this... Uh, Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> like a heavy yeah, metal bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Absolutely. So uh, he's going to... He won versus Sixo, and right now he's yeah. going to face Thais, the, the previous European champion. Yep. I want to say previous, yeah. We could say that. But I mean, he, he came really close to getting um, basically the world championship. Right. Very, very close to getting to that spot. Unfortunately for him, didn't do it. He's been very consistent. I think I put him at the top of the players, the you know competence level across the board, across all Hearthstone players. He's definitely up there in the, like, the top five. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, mean, I was selecting ties for a, a top player of February, and in February itself, he had 84 plus percent win rates in the streamed uh, tournaments. So uh, his performance in February was just amazing. And right now, March, he's already going for the Swiss. Uh, he's here uh, winning his first match, so one match away from advancing to day three. Yep, so it looks like uh, Tice is running what I would like to call the single most standard lineup ever. We've got Druid, Paladin, Warlock, which right now I think are the three classes that we would rate uh, as a whole at the top one. Yeah, the, the, the general idea, yeah, that these are just the three overall. Maybe Warrior can is, is like a close fourth, I right. guess, for that one. And uh, and Kamon is running Druid, so I'm kind of interested if there's any mechs in this deck. <laughs> uh, it'll be really cool, but I imagine be because the state of Druid at the moment, like mid-range Druid is just so powerful, but it's going to be Tice's Druid that we open with versus what appears to be, at least at the moment, Zoo. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A the, very the aggressive gives list. It away. Uh, there are some lists that run, you know, the double Lepronomes as well. Yep. Trying to be on the very aggressive side, and in that, I guess in that deck, Leroy also has a good spot. Uh, but it's it's seen everywhere, right? Like it's that Doom Guard substitute that has no penalty and also works with Sea Giants. And everything else. Yeah, and I really like um, that Leroy sort of disappeared a little bit after it got nerfed into like the five mana territory from four. Right. And um, but it's been there. Uh, it's, it's returning to, to quite a few decks now. We've seen like combo variants of Warlock, uh, Zoo lists um, as well, like just as the extra burst, even with on its own or just with a power overwhelming. So pretty good to see it make an appearance again. Yeah, I'm really happy that Elyria is back, uh, not only because it's a, a great character or like a person from World of Warcraft and everybody was shouting Lyra Jenkins, but the fact that we were shouting it for for a year almost uh, previously before he got nerfed, yep. we can do it again. Yeah, it's good. I like to see it. But looking at Tice's opening. I mean, I feel like the opening from uh, from Kalman was a little bit, Kalman was a bit weird because I expected there to be an immediate coin juggler to force a wrath and no wild growth onto, uh, but he opted to play the Void Walker as a standalone, which is very low pressure. Lets the druid develop what he wants, plays better around, say, Innervate, Keeper of the Grove. But that's about the you know the one thing you dodge. It seems like he's going for the Imp Gang Boss, so he won't. Li uh, he would like to um, coin out Imp Gang Boss, but there is one card that's really yeah. weird in Zudek, Raven. What, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Belcher? It's very strange. And you know what? 
of, of, all, of all the players, this just doesn't surprise me that much from Camlin, actually, because the last time I cast him, he brought a really odd druid deck, and he makes it work somehow. So he's one of these very few players, actually, I believe, that can make, like, completely their own version of the deck, you know, really, like, weird card choices, but actually make it work. And, you know, he's gone this far, so I, I have no doubt he's going to get some success. But this kind of opens up to what this Warlock can be. It might edge towards a more mid-range Warlock, or is it just Zoo with Belcher's Tectin maybe to beat other Zoo decks, you know, have a better matchup versus those? It's going to be interesting to see how this progresses, because at the moment, it does look very standard minus that Belcher. Right. Yeah, overall, I think well, uh, we can agree that... Wow, Thoris. <laughs> uh, we can, I wanted to say we can agree that this Zoo has a good matchup, but then we see Thoris, and that doesn't change anything, actually. Yeah, I mean, it really... The, the thing I want to I wanna maybe look at is Zoo's follow-up, and the reason why he didn't play Juggler. It's obviously trying to play some kind of implosion turn uh, at some point in the near future. What I was thinking is maybe he wanted to go turn three with Juggler, Coin, uh, Peddler, something along those lines, but ended up playing the Peddler with the Coin. So that means the implosion is going to be delayed. The Emperor Thorson will get maximum value, and Gang Boss comes out to replace the 3-2 and the 2-2. Two -two. Uh, but that really is like super low pressure. Yeah. yeah, and what this Emperor does, although it doesn't really have a huge impact on his next turn, unless he draws like a Living Roots or something, it has a massive impact on the turn after that. Turn six, Dr. Boom, definitely feels good. And when Tyus has just dropped an Emperor after Camlin did his turn two, like he's got to be a little bit upset about that and has to really focus on coming back into this Let's game. The second pedal is going to help though. And there we go, Power of Whelming was found. So he's going to be able to keep a 2-2 two -two and a 3-2. Yeah, Power of is a really good answer here. And that second Peddler, again, like, these two Peddlers have put, gave him the Flame Imp to drop down to continue the pressure and then straight onto the PO to be able to deal with that I, I'm thinking, whilst keeping enough minions on the board. I'm thinking, is there a way maybe... The, uh, now, now there's Ancient of Lore, but I was thinking if uh, maybe Tice can run out of cards. So Zul still had card advantage and uh, some board presence. So it would be possible for the Zul to maybe just grind the Druid down. And this is what Zul sometimes does, just use some of the minions to clean the board and then the, the rest of the minions to deal a bit of damage. Right. But now with Ancient of Lore, uh, Tice will have some more drawing options open here. Yeah, and I think that actual, that um, really quick start from Tice, if, it, if he like uh, innovated out any other card that wasn't Emperor, he easily could have had that problem. Because sure. it would have still like, if he, if he didn't have Emperor, innovated out Druid of the Claw, it still would have died to the PO, right? Yeah. So then, you know, then you start to have a bit of um, more problems. But because it was the reduction from the Emperor, and he has follow-ups like Boom, and as you said, Nim, straight into Ancient of Law, he has so many more options. Even just a Shredder for later on is going to be good. See, like, the decision here to trade away the Peddler early on with the PO instead of the Voidwalker just shows that um, it would have given Kalman a bit more protection just because he's able to protect the 1-1s from a hero power play. One of the things, though, is that the 1-1s that... Um, Kelman has on the board really dilute the value of these boom bars. Yeah, well, Void Walker can still be useful because Doctor Boom is a seven uh, attack creature. But uh, if there is a ton in the way, he will need to he will need to attack into that. Yeah, and, and g given the option for the Druid to have to deal with a Void Walker, um, even after Emperor on turn seven, when they normally do want to drop Ancient of Law, although you know one of the other cards is Boom that he's already seen. It's really good because it just messes with the Druid's mana, which is one of the best ways to beat them, actually. Make them play slightly off curve, and it really uh, does, uh, doesn't does help them out whatsoever. But I'm going to be interested to see if Cameron plays this Sludge Belcher, and even more interested to see Tice's face I think, when the Sludge uh, Belcher comes down. This turn is probably just attack with the 1-1s one uh, into the bombs, and then after that, when the bombs are already resolved, play maybe Juggler and him Gang Boss. If you just play the Sludge Belcher, you just give Sludge Belcher away for free. And uh, it, you give a good attack to Dr. Yeah. yeah. One of the Imps dies, but that is probably acceptable. I mean, the Belcher is still a massive roadblock. If you play the Juggler, you're trying to be more aggressive. You haven't seen Swipe. You saw the Dr. Boom, which makes sense, obviously. Uh, there doesn't mean there's no Swipe. But it is still a very high pressure turn for uh, for Kamlan. So now with uh, Savage Roar, there is an option also to clear the, the Void Walker. He, he had a possibility to maybe just charge the 4-4 four, for four, 5 mana. And then just, uh, well, Hero Power would not do much. So I actually like Druid of the Claw Savage Roar, because you can actually clear up uh, three minions off this board if you want, or deal nine to face. Or just and take kill the damage, yeah, yeah. Right, like you, you, you kill the one, two with your face, let's say. And yeah. You can trade up a little bit with the. Uh, I think one of the interesting points here as well is that if you look at Tice's health, he's only on 18. There's an okay amount of power on Kamlin's side of the board and Leroy, so if he draws into like a PO as well, that's going to be a lot of damage out of nowhere. Yeah. 
really going to be interesting to see if Tice uses Druid with Chlorine, Taunt, or Charge here. Well, obviously, he can also just you go for Ancient Floor. floor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you want to talk about getting board presence. You've got a Savage Roar in hand with Druid of the Claw. Maybe all you want to do is get bodies on the board. Uh, he doesn't know there's a Belcher. But yeah. yeah, and he doesn't know there is a Leroy. Yeah, I think Leroy's one of the, <laughs> Leroy's one of the cards you're going to expect, but I think the problem with the Ancient of Lore is he might want to wait one more turn to see if he needs to use it to heal or draw. Yeah, I really like it. it, it, it if he, if the, he comes under a lot of pressure this turn and say that the Druid of the Claw is silenced and then there's some more, like, uh, you know, just more board control and more uh, damage represented, then he might actually need to use Ancient of Lore to heal, but sitting on 18 at the time before the attack from the Savage Roy probably felt safe-ish. Yeah, definitely. Well, looks like Leroy found a perfect friend like a 4-6? That's 4-6, yeah. I mean, I'd be surprised to see anything else be done here by uh, Kamlan. Tapping means you restrict every single follow-up option. Playing Belcher is a sacrificial play for the most part. Yeah, I think what's good as well is the, uh, the Leroy into Voidwalker almost dim like guarantees the Druid is going to hero power next turn to run the two Dragonlings in. Yep. But it, he'll, it, you can make an imp. It, yeah, that's true. He can just clear them. But uh, if he uses hero power, then he's only going to have six mana available, which... We've already seen Emperor, so there are no great six mana turns from Druid in terms of singular drops. He could just trade with them, of course, and just make it even more likely that the Dr. Boom has to go in, which is still fine. He's still, um, I suppose trading is actually better because Wait, I think it's great, actually. Leroy. I would trade with maybe one. You don't have to trade with the other, but it really depends uh, on whether or not you, you're afraid of second roar giving that one one extra trading potential. Yeah, I think it was amazing because you've just seen uh, Roar being used and yep. uh, Dr. Boom attacking the, the, one of the Void Walkers. So uh, at, the, at this very moment, Dr. Boom is stopped by the one free taunt. <laughs> There's no way to go. Unbelievable. This Dr. Boom hasn't even hit anything worthwhile yet. It's so funny. Yeah. You there's Life Coach Dr. Booms and there's Ty's Dr. Booms. <laughs> so now what do you do? Like, um, you, you, you will be able to kill the one free. Uh, do you ever go for draw and try to uh, draw something like an innervate maybe, but it won't Living Roots, you. maybe. Yeah, Living Roots to deal with it. You probably I mean, there's five on the board. You have 13. Uh, you would need to see the second PO to get completely blown out. Uh, and even then, there still needs to be more damage found. So Ancient of Lore could be played if he wants. For board presence sake... Yeah, I think I actually like this Yeah, as well. exactly. For board presence sake, you would play two minions and a hero power play. Yeah. Heals you a little bit. This is one good board for Tice, and uh, he's still healthy on 14. It's not like he's playing versus Druid with combo in hand. Well, I think he's just, he's seen the Leroy as well, right? So yeah. you're not expecting big burst out of anywhere. And here's another interesting card as well, like Shredder. Not the most common card seen in uh, What I like about this Dude. line is that, you know, Tice going for the board means, I'm I, number one, I want to get this board. And if I get it, and I'm low on health because it chooses to go all in, I always have the Ancient of Lore as a backup plan. Yeah. So this board will not only, you know, take advantage of what the opponent has, but I'll also be able to win off of it just by healing myself. Uh, do you tap here? I, I think I like tapping in a way. I don't know exactly what he has in deck, but uh, the cards I see in hand are not the best. So if you tap, you can. If, if you don't get the buff, you can still go for. Whoa! Sure. Okay. There is a buff. This is this might be big. You can kill Doctor Boom and still develop uh, part of the Shredder. Yeah, I think that's okay. That seems fine. Yeah, I think you just you just run the two two in, right? Yeah, I think so. Like it might be like it doesn't I mean, matter. You, you don't die to roar, right? So do you? You've seen one roar as well, so you should be you fine. You could play Lepronome and Shredder just to min max the amount of damage. That yeah, and Lepronome try and actually gives just you. kill him next turn. Right, exactly. Yeah. Just go all in. You're you're likely to get at least an imp or a two drop from the Shredder. Yeah, staying and alive. the Lepronome's got almost well, pretty much guaranteed two damage as well, right? Because right. it's gonna die at some point. And yeah. then Wrath. Wrath pickup from Tice means he can actually either use it to cycle and go onto the Lepanome, uh, so it's one less minion to trade with, or he can use it to just straight up kill off the uh, in gang boss, for example, or pop the Shredder. It seems like, seems like Tice is still in a good position overall because he has Ancient of Blur, so he is he can get like six health or five health and remove a minion off the board. We'll yeah. have to see what happens though, because if these trades end up a little clunky for Tice. Yeah, and the problem as well is if he heals, then he's top decking every single game, uh, every single turn, sorry. And Sylvanas is okay, but can just be ignored at this point, actually, for, for Camelon um, if it comes down, or even yeah. if it comes down next turn, you can just ignore it. So I think he almost has to heal this turn, even with the trades, because you just don't know what's going to come out from the So wall. what are the best trades? Like uh, attacking to the two free with uh, Piloted Shredder looks I mean, you can't good. even kill everything. Yeah, no you, can't, you can't heal the Shredder. Do you actually just, do you actually just leave the shredder up then? Yeah, I think so. Like, what, it's the one you just—it's it's so awkward, and the drop from the shredder could be even be more terrible. 
you attack in theme gang boss this is fine you probably need to go face with dr boom because it's so much damage yeah i agree just like <laughs> killing a one one imp boom finally so gets four to go more face. damage needed there for he needs to find four more otherwise this game could slip away at any moment the belcher might be able to stall a bit longer so there is that do you tap still i think so yeah i think so because you can still play lepino whoa hi I'm oh, Asher Drake. I'm a zoo deck. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I, no, I think no. I misstepped. I, I'm like, when I see Asher Drake, I, I'm thinking Dark Bomb. Like, he had Leroy in hand. I yeah. like that. It makes sense in, the, in a list like this one. I've seen quite a few uh, zoo lists, very aggressive ones with Lepernones, also playing the Dark Bomb. Some even playing Soulfire for Hell's sake. Interesting. Yeah. Well, so this turn you probably just go for Belcher, Lepernome, and. Probably a trade on the 2 1. Do you. Do you the kill Dr. Boom or do you kill the 4 1? You might kill the, you'll kill Dr. Boom, I imagine, yeah. I was gonna say, do you actually kill one of, like, uh, yeah, Boom on the 5 5, I guess? Boom's just straight Now you kill on 2 1. Yep. But this does make. Uh, it, this this slows down the clock. They're trying to put the Druid on so much. I think now what's good here is, though, um, if he doesn't have a Living Roots or a Wrath, then this shred, is go this shred is gonna die. Yeah, I'll keep it. This shred is gonna die to the, to the 1 2. If he chooses to attack in, so he's going to be like the first half of the shredder ahead. Does he have to play Sylvanas now? Well, Sylvanas might still be good, right? Especially because Azure Drake on next turn. It's probably like better mana management. Like, yeah. well, the, well, the problem is he can't Azure Drake and swipe anymore. Right. Um, so because he obviously just drew Drake with the uh, hard growth. I'm surprised he went for the Drake there. One of the yeah, worst Innervate draws he could have found in the spot. Like <laughs> this one. Yeah. Now, he can't do anything with this innervate. Wow, so uh, actually Shredder. Do you pop your own Shredder? I, I imagine I you have, have to. Do one charge? Nope. <laughs> if only Battle Cry is triggered from if the Shredder draw. Only. <laughs> so 10 more damage needed there for Calmine. Well, actually, it goes back to what we were talking about. Like, there's almost no way for, uh, for good trades to be found. But this Drake is surprisingly good. You don't have to tap, and you're still going to be able to draw. Yep. Yeah. And uh, how good is Juggler here? You can get these free Juggles. From the Shredder drop, from Azure Drake, and from the left. Yeah, I think I think you actually play the do you play the juggler and attack him with the Shredder first into the get, fourth get floor. That, yeah, into the fourth floor because you don't want any juggles to hit the fourth floor, right? So you play the juggler, attack him first, then Drake, then uh, and you hope for a two-one charge Murloc. Why not? Awesome. Might as yeah, well. Yeah. We might, or you know what? Even a Vitality Totem, I'll take. You gotta play two a routes, a right? Free taps. Yeah. An Oyotron. Let's do it. Vitality Totem or or it is attacking and the we'll Shredder go. is gonna drop. Oh, Gilbin, that oh, that was the bad. knife he wanted. And he, yeah, and he gets the juggle, so he has two chances to hit the 5-1 now. Another Drake. Wow, this late oh, is like, oh, wow. unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, this was this was so good for Kamelon. Uh, now this knife doesn't even matter. Well, why oh. not face? Yeah, that was, a, that was actually the perfect set of knives. And that's a blank. So at the moment, Tyus can't kind of do anything. Like, he can kill Juggler. Uh, Sylvanas, so arm, like, hero power, innervate, play the BGH, kill the, the Juggler. Like, he can do a few things, but you're not going to be able to win the game unless the uh, the Zoo player blanks. Yeah, Sylvanas is still okay-ish. Right. But uh, if Kamlan deals with Sylvanas, he still has a draw of Azure Drake. Yeah, and that's the key, actually. The, the, the additional draw without having to live tap is huge. Because it just keeps him at a relatively safe health. Camlin is like, I'm at 14 health. Am I dead? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How dead am I right now? No idea what's coming. There's a druid, in fact. Right. That would have been so sick BM as well. He kills the juggler because he has combo <laughs> anyway. Oh, the tilt. Well, you probably do not expect it from Dice. Yeah, of all yeah people. that's true. Dice wouldn't BM anyone. He's too nice. He's going to have to start one day. Once the edges get too thin, he's gonna have to grab like last round everything. Well, G2 has RDU to BM people. Yeah, that's right. Life coach is there to keep RDU in check. Ties doesn't need any policing, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Ties do his thing. Unless you view life coach as BMing people because he robs every turn. <laughs> who knows? Maybe he's just been kind of building up this facade <laughs> of this nice guy who overthinks, but in fact he's just like, you know what, I don't need to. never mind. Oh, so just six, BM. seven, eight, nine, there's ten. Uh, you need to from lose hand that with the abusive. I mean, it doesn't matter. You win next turn, right? Like, well, it's easy to kill well. the four two, but then like Sylvanas, uh, if you get Force of Nature, you're still alive. Savagery, you're alive. Like, yeah, it looks good if you leave Sylvanas alone. And there might not be a way to, to kill Sylvanas. Oh, raise! So, yes, oh my they, God, they so do play Soulfire. Wait, now <laughs> we have it. Oh yeah. 
Done. Okay. Well, I guess that works. Bomb. And Dark Bomb, sure, why not? Wow. That's oh the list God. I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. likes yeah. to play Dark Bombs, the play Soulfire. There's this... It's a very aggressive Zulus that somehow came up recently. I want to call it Aggro Lock instead, but it's got so many mid-range cards that I just don't know what it is exactly. It's the... So we talked about Zul before, and we never mentioned this version, because there's like Sea Giant, there's the Brown Dark Iron Dwarf, right. and the... The aggressive one with Argent Squires that we've seen, I think this is the fourth build. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I actually agree with you, Nox, as well. Like, even calling this Zoo is is interesting because, yes, it's 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 an aggressive warlock list, but Zoo is more based around like sticky minions that can trade up a lot right. and uh, and just stick on the board. Whereas I'm pretty sure there were no eggs in that deck. We didn't no, see no, eggs. No, no, we no haven't eggs. seen any. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's it's no space. So, yeah, exactly. There's no eggs. We didn't see any creepers either. So it's really just swapping those cards out and just being more aggressive overall, like you said. And those uh, Azure Drakes really help with that. The big question is, is, is this list better versus Druid? It might be because there's the Shredder, Azure Drake, Belt. And you never tap. Druid. Like, you tap a lot less, I find, in this list. Yeah. And your top decks are more likely to find you immediate lethals, given that you play Dark Bombs and... Uh, yeah, actual burn in, in your hand, right. rather than, like, yeah. P.O.R. abusive, which is the only... So it might be, it might be, in a way. Like, we were always talking, like, the currently Zoo, even though it has slight edge, it's not the, the same advantage it had in the past. Maybe Kamlan actually brings the different breed of Zoo that has a good matchup versus Druid. And we've seen that that seemed close, that there would be a combo from, uh, from Tice, but uh, it was a good win for Kamlan. And right now we will have a mirror match, Zoo versus Zoo, where Thais, I think, is playing the Giants version. I, I, I haven't seen it, but he I played it at, before at BGL tournaments. It's possible, yeah. I don't know, I feel like Thais must be a bit disappointed that his trademark class lost a match <laughs> in the last hero standing format. It's one of those very unfortunate things. Because now that he can't play Druid, and he still has to face off against one, it's really painful. Yeah, definitely a match that you, you don't really want to lose. Looking at Kamala's open hand, though, it's not fantastic. Um, as you normally need the, the, the quicker opening in a not a, a, a exact mirror match, um, no matter what the overlay just looked like then with two uh, two warlocks, but still, um, you definitely want the early game to, to combat the zoo's board control. And yeah, the, definitely. Tice has like an incredible hand. Yeah, here. double peddler. I mean, I I think here you definitely want to coin the peddler out because it stops the uh, for a potential flame imp or at least trades with a flame imp pretty well. Yeah, it's not bad, and you also get a card that can. Help it's just you. more options for turn two, right? Like even if you get like a Stompass Boar. Help an Archer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's like it's actually more options for turn two because he has a one drop guaranteed next turn. Or he can, if he really wants, depending on what the board looks like, just play the other uh, Dark Peddler and just have a flurry of one drops in his hand. So this opens up the opportunity of trading up uh, into something with the Voidwalker while still coining out the Peddler yep. or playing Peddler, then coining out whatever one drop you get, if it's good enough. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, as Raven said, like this uh, Zoo versus Zoo is all about the early battle. Uh, whoever gets the minions and who, whoever gets um, edge on board is going to win the match because there's not that many uh, comeback mechanisms. Even though Kamlan is playing a bit of a different version, uh, he, he we haven't seen any AOEs from him. Um, have we seen Implosion? Like he has to play. We have seen Implosion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think uh, I think one of the the interesting interactions that will come up maybe later on is the addition of dart bombs in Kamlin's deck because it's more removal that a standard zoo list doesn't really have. Uh, they normally just rely on minions to trade up or, or an implosion or something, you know, like get off the odd implosion or two there. But I think it'll be interesting to just dart bomb to just straight up remove these smaller minions and not have to worry about them. Absolutely. But for now, Dice is just uh, super ahead and getting flaming from Dark Peddler as yeah. well. This board is so good in Zoo versus Zoo battles. Yeah. And he's got the insurance with the Abusive Sergeant that he can trade up into something like uh, Imp Gang Boss if it were to come out. Yeah. yeah. There's that Dark Bomb, but I think actually uh, it's... This might be a Forest Dark Bomb. And, you know, you play Abusive for tempo, and then either you lose it to the Voidwalker, and then you implosion, say, the Peddler, and you get one-on-ones to contest that Vo yeah. Voidwalker. Or you end up playing the M Gang boss, losing it probably in the process and doing nothing. What about just going? Yeah, like M Gang boss. Can it might work. work. It can work. Yeah. I think Im yeah, I think M Gang boss is okay uh, because if your opponents then trading in in terms of uh, say an abusive and then trading the Void Walker into the one one that spawns, right. then you've just slowed him down quite a lot and he's you no, know, he's not really pushing any face damage there and he can still follow up with him, his own impl his implosion like afterwards. Yeah. Also like the fact that you are in a way. With Im Gangos, you're forcing a buff. Like you, you want Tice to. Yeah, if you Tice has like an abusive, then Implosion will trade really well versus the abusive in the future. Yeah, and also if Tice ignores the Im Gangos because he just chooses to believe it's too much of a, 
you're too much of a big deal and he just like can just ignore it because he has the taunt. Yeah, it looks okay, like he's going to go for that line of play and hope that it works out. I mean, Tyus has more than enough options here. To Dark Peddler, though. Is that the Dark Peddler turn? I pick up a coil. Oh, yeah. yeah. Archer. Stone does boar. <laughs> we keep laughing about the Stone does boar. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh boar. We, we called it. There we go. Do you still go for it? I think you can. Of course, yes. It's, it's more Why damage not? protected. <laughs> Why not? It's perfect. You keep it's the board. There's nothing to clean up yours. You're good to go. You got an implosion turn afterwards. It's hard to say no. To uh, the Stone does boar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sees more play in uh, Peddler than in Hunter. And yeah. You can take it. Nice. The warlock. Oh, that pig. Well, it looks like uh, Kalman's gonna have to review his game plan. It sounds like his game plan involves a lot of imps. A lot of implosions that hit for four. Yeah, yeah actually, the second implosion is pretty big because uh, traditional Zulis didn't really have a way to deal with multiple minions oh. that well other than straight up trades. Right. So the second implosion just filling up the board, and then uh, Kamlin can use the power of overwhelming, maybe silence off a buff target, and then really just start trading away the board. Because when he then starts to drop minions like Sludge Belcher, he sort of has the advantage in, in the mid to late game, I feel. Absolutely. Unless, like, uh, there is an implosion from Dice that uh, hits. That is more. well read. Oh! Wow. <laughs> and here you thought you had the game. Yeah, and suddenly, power overwhelming. Still a dead card. Good card know. there. Coil in the deck, not off of a peddler for Kamlan. Yeah, it's a really interesting list, and this coil is actually quite good this turn. Does he reply with coil and then his other implosion? <laughs> Should be like imps everywhere. There is Defender of Argus, and there is one. How bad it is for you. I'd love to see a Hellfire in that list. <laughs> Yeah, these one of right. I bet Camelon would as well. I mean, the thing is, it, it's one of those. No, it's one of those cards that like it just doesn't see much play. But there was a point where yeah, well, Zoo ran the Hellfire, and I feel like this list with the amount of spells it's got could probably use a single copy of it if it wanted. I think Belcher here, uh, by the way, is like this turn also a valid yeah. play. If implosion, if you just implosion for two, I think. It's almost over for you. No, I actually think the uh, the Im Gang Boss Mortal Coil might be the best here. Coil off a 2-1, put the Im Gang Boss down, and without one -one. buffed minions, these do not trade into Im Gang Boss at all, because you just will generate a board just as big. He does go for the Belcher, though. Yeah, I like Belcher because... It uh, seems really weak to Power Overwhelming. It is weak to Power Overwhelming, but at this point, like you're in such a bad position that you have to make a gamble that there is that something has not been drawn. And uh, PO, I, I guess there was a, a, a chance to have a PO before. Uh, but the Fender of Argus would absolutely destroy you, especially if you implosion only for two. Right. If the, if the roll is low, I think you lose the game, which is why Im Gang Boss felt a lot more appealing. Yeah, Im Gang Boss was okay as well, but then uh, Belcher is also like stopping some damage to face and forcing a specific board. Uh, we'll see what Kamlin can come up with on the next turn, because again, Tyus has taken the early lead with the double pillar opener. And I feel like that alone is already super difficult. Yeah, to and what's funny is could be, even though the decks are, are quite different in terms of what, what they can do, as we said earlier, Kamlin's version still doesn't seem to run any AoE, and this is this remove the different styles, Zoo versus Zoo. This is how you lose. Right. right? You, you know your opponent builds a board, and you just you just lose because you cannot answer it. There's no board sweep in the yeah. deck, and you just you, you could play whatever minion you want, and they're still just going to power through because they're always a turn ahead on that board control. Yeah. So this turn you start with Coil, try to uh, draw that Shadow Flame. There's uh... Soul Fire does very little. You can still play it after implosion, I guess, and uh, deal with the two free. So yeah. I imagine that I might actually be your your best bet. Honestly. Really, I I think I'd play in, in, in gang boss peddler now. Yeah. You just need that in gang boss down because it's the only thing that's gonna battle back for the board. Uh, you or an implosion, implosion of course. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh. that's it. So he still has a chance, but well, what's he throw? The owl. Okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. yeah, that's actually okay. <laughs> Surprisingly fine. It's been sitting in his hand for a long time now and hasn't seen any <laughs> use. Not that it wouldn't now, but it Although a Void Caller <laughs> comes into the hand, typical. Oh, the Void Caller's like, oh, what was that? The Owl went? Okay, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll come in. The game. <laughs> Somebody called. Get me in, beckons. coach. Get me in. <laughs> like, normally, <laughs> Owl is actually really good in this matchup because you silence the Ruben Egg or you silence the Jaguar, yeah, right. so you have a good answer. But that Owl is just sitting there and doing nothing. So what do you do now? You can um, you can actually juggler. Juggler into Void Caller. Not bad. I like it. Yep. And I think... Uh, Regardless of what happens, I wouldn't even mind him trading all his three minions into these imps. Yeah, because like if you just keep the board empty, there's nothing the other guy can do, the other zoo player can do about it. Or yeah, the warlock player. You can put pressure. I mean, you've got five damage to face, and you're putting down two more minions that both will work off of juggler doomguard next turn. 
It's kind of hard to like justify trading when you're so far ahead, right? Yeah, I yeah. suppose with it because the minions are two attack, that's fine. I don't know. I just really like emptying the board because then nothing crazy can happen. Nothing like power overwhelming or any abuses right. or any of these big trade up potentials that uh, Warlock oh. has. Yeah, but this is a different version of Zudo. Like there are shredders and like uh, cards you haven't seen before. So maybe yeah, I still just mean like this. There's still always going to be power overwhelming and abusive sergeant in the deck. That's all. So I have a question. Once the new set comes out and you've got Tentacle of Nazoth as a one drop, in a wild, the implosion plays might be a lot weaker because Peddler is able to just wipe out a board full of one health minions. Like a whirlwind effect for Peddler. You will be one of the few people playing wild I'm sure. It's fun, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun definitely. If you if you want to play a bit of Secret Paladin and you've missed like Elven effects. Archer. I wanna play Elven Archer. Elven Archer? Yep. It will work. With the with the tentacle? Yep. Just you, the you tentacle just Elven it. Archer. Oh wipe the board. Double Peddler. You can play Whirlwind as a warrior, you know? Like it, it's a really good card. It deals one damage to the board. Or, or I can just play that new Warlock card and become a warrior. It's easier that way. Now, yeah, I true. feel like picking up the PO uh, is him trying to get a trade. Like later on with the abusive yep. PO on the same turn on the Doom Guard. Interesting. Seems so flimsy, but it, it's probably the only way he's got uh, of even coming back in this game. Yeah, so Void Work is actually pretty nice here as well. Oh, does PO change anything? Uh, no, not really. Doesn't not this too much. Yeah, like Tice is still ahead. Well, you might with the, the the Hunter Keeper popping right at the end of the turn. Would you? Want well, you can still just like kill the. Yeah, I, I like this. Yeah, this kill the better. Better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. By a long shot. <laughs> no need for PO. No. Well, let's <laughs> not go complete stupid shows. mode. Yeah, it's a really good situation for for Tice. Like again, full board. Um, oh, he even gets the last juggle as well. Is there a chance for a Shadow Flame? Nope. Can Not here. There we and go. Kalman concedes this game, so ties, um, ties the series. We have to assume that there's no, uh, there's no Hellfire, there's no Shadow Flame again in the deck at all. Otherwise, he would have at least life tapped to find the, yeah. the card had it been in there. He had so many new cards. Well, new cards, new cards in the Zulus that uh, I doubt there was any AOE right at this point. But we'll not see the deck anymore. It's, it's uh, defeated and. Uh, Tice is going to stay with his Zulist. So what do you bring now, uh, being Kamlan? You mentioned there's Druid, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, this is a more standard Zulist. So Druid is not as bad as it used to be um, against that type of Zoo. The alternative would be, I think, the uh, Warrior, but that can struggle if it's not... Well, it is Patron, never mind. Yeah, it's Patron. I was going to say, if it's not Patron, turns out it is, so... It's Patron, so it's a good matchup for yeah. Patron. I like it. So Raven, why is it a good matchup? Yeah, so basically, <laughs> Patron has a, the, the weapons are just so key in this matchup uh, in terms of uh, your death bike can, is really good at clearing up in gang boss or after any implosions with the whirlwind effect. Even Fire War Axe on turn two can just deal with almost any minions they're going to drop. And from that point on, the second you get Patrons down, they pretty much trade with any minion that the zoo player is going to drop and then complete, uh, continue to just regenerate and air duplicate. So other than, and even if he's, uh, even if this was the Sea Giants version, and it still applies with things like if there's Malganis in this deck, because we did see the Void Caller, yeah. the easy answer of executes onto the big targets. Right. Uh, it just makes, it, makes the matchup so favored for the uh, for the Warrior player. And that's yes. a great hand for him. Yeah. So what Zoo has to do basically is to threaten uh, from the very beginning, be really aggressive, and whenever the patron turn happens, to have minions on oh. board that can kill the patrons, and then push even more damage, and also ask the questions: Do you have execute? Do you have a second execute? Yeah. And the moment the, the warrior doesn't have removal, Zoo will be able to take control of the board. But, but also hand. the moment the uh, the Zoo player has an opening hand like this, it gets a little bit rough. Yeah, it's good stuff unless he gets uh, void color. Right. Yeah. This is the type of hand that looks very bad, and it is. But it doesn't take much for Zoo to come back in with a hand like that one, right? Like, at turn three, you still don't have anything anyway. So if you pick up even an abusive to deal some more damage, play the egg with it, your turn four could be a pickup of a Void Caller, defend of Argus on a leftover yeah. minion. But as we can see from Camelon, like, his opening hand is insane. He right. has a Shredder, he has the, uh, the, the Death Slam. Bite. <laughs> the, it, it, now he has Slam, oh my god. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and man. then, like, Death oh. Bite into a... Uh, into the car size, amazing. Dice is like, no, this was my only threat. There we go. Picks up a curve for now. That, he needs to continue doing that. Right, pick up, pick up that Defender of Argus, pick up that Void Caller. Actually, like this into Defender of Argus, Lothab into It's Doom insane. Garden 6. It is insane. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. good. Okay. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> sure. 
I'm going to let you two have that one, um, but I think Camelon's still looking pretty damn good here. Yeah, but what do you do this turn? Do you just dead the spites? And Eek. Corsair? Yeah, I think I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like my free 3 3. Thank you, Nimsh. <laughs> he doesn't even have to. I'll take that. it. <laughs> you can bluff and think about things. Uh, so, what, what he could do as well is he could actually just coin out the Shredder. Although it does trade straight in from the Imp, and then there's a potential you know, buff from the Egg to create the 4 4, then you just Death Bite the Nerubi and Egg down. I kind of like. Would never Shredder here. No, I, I would play the Death Bite just because your health goes down. And if there's something like a PO on the Egg to kill a Corsair, then you can play the Frothing. Second charge of the Axe pops, you have yeah. two health, like two minions damage. Yeah. Two characters, then you draw two cards. On I also the have double Death Bite, so you won't start using Yeah, the yeah, I think there's the second one as well, yeah. yeah. This isn't like guaranteed. He doesn't even have Patron in hand, so it's not like coining it early forcing his second attack on turn four is going to be bad for him. Uh, and as you said, he does have the second one ready to go. Okay, so he's not playing Corsair because of the... Wow, okay, look at that. Yeah, this is it, awesome. It, <laughs> see, this is where the game might just turn uh, for Tice if he keeps picking up cards that do something. Yeah, it also worked for him that the Corsair is not being played. Right. For Tice, is like, fine, no free-free. It's okay, I didn't have a way to deal with it anyway. So the whirlwind effect will go off before the um, before the demons pulled, which is actually really important. Yeah. Because in terms of holding the corsair, it's because he had battle rage, so you guarantee a two two draw battle rage if he plays corsair, then yeah. attacks. If the weapon was down afterwards, then he could have attacked. The whirlwind effect hits whatever demon pulls out, and he could battle rage into execute, which would be huge. But he's not going to get that opportunity, and he's not drawn a whirlwind or anything either. So this could be a little bit rough. We might even. How insane would it be if he overrode his death bite with the new one and try to get the AoE from that second one to kill the demon that gets pulled out? That would be pretty reasonable. How, how insane would it be if he pulled out that door? Too insane. Like, you see the Void Caller, do you kill it? There's only three cards in hand. I might play Shredder, right? Like, this might be a good turn for that Shredder you mentioned yeah. earlier. Let the opponent... Because the problem is, without a guaranteed way to kill whatever comes out of the Voidwalker, you're almost giving the minion charge, right? Yep. Whereas if you play Shredder and let him trade the Voidwalker into it if he wants to, then, you know, unless it does have charge, like the Doom Guard we can see, then, you know, if Marganis comes out, you have a, another turn to try and do something about it. Yeah, but I like leaving it up. It's only there, three damage. There's also an argument about, like, killing it now because the next, like, Warlock has only three cards. And uh, Warlock normally plays a lot of demons. There's an Imp Gang boss, and never flame him. So there is a possibility there is no demon in hand or a small demon, and you force that small demon right now. And if you if you give Warlock a turn, he can life tap. He can play the small demon and then get even more value from the Void Caller. So I, I'm not saying it's correct to attack into the Void Caller. You still got to think about it. Yeah, you yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. need to consider it. Yeah, I like this though because you present a really nice target. To, to kill the first half of the um, of the shredder, and then the idea is if there's like an abusive or something for the egg to go into the second part of the shredder to maybe clear it off and pop the egg, then it feels really good, and you always want to go for this because um, also if he gets oh okay he's got I'm just scared. Of I was wondering the if he got the Malganis and he just plays Doom Guard yeah. with the Malganis buff and be like, yep, yeah, all, all in, all yeah. in. Even if there is a Doomsayer, you can just kill it with a Doom Guard attack. Yeah. Well, now we can't. But it's not that, that was a bit <laughs> risky. Um, but I mean, ultimately, what he was looking for is wow, okay, that's a battle rage. Yeah, it yeah no, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good battle rage, but he needs to get an execute. I just want to point it out the Malganus dies to this poor little 3 4. Yep. That's it. It's a bit sad. I mean, you can literally play double Corsair, frothing, trade, trade. Yeah. Yeah, I guess then you, can, yeah. you have a good battle rage. Yeah, yeah. It's quite, it's quite all right. Yeah. It's perfect, and th this was the whole thing of not attacking the Void Walker, uh, Void Caller. Sorry, last turn, because now like Malganis, other than currently making the Warlock immune and now forcing you to trade into it, actually has not really done anything. Yeah. It's not a huge impact, which is why I wouldn't have minded the trade first, and then you could just go all in on Doomguard and make your opponent have like double executing hand. I mean, that would have been very all-in and probably yeah. too but risky. This keeps your Malganus safe from execute no matter what, right? Yeah. Because Lothab blocks execute. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Do you do you really go for frauding? I guess you do because it's like yeah. Why not? The taunt's best protected, board. right? Yeah, you have there's two taunts. Yeah, yeah, but I'm protected. thinking like you can actually pick up execute with the battle. Oh, you can't no, battle. You can't. There's Lothab. 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 Yeah, 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 right, you're right. You can't even battle. Rage. He's breaking Lothab. You Whoa. can't do anything. This is kind of interesting. He didn't actually kill the Malganus. Damage, but. I still feel like that's the play I would have made most of the time. Yeah, you just remove it straight away. Off yeah, it makes sense to kill Mulganis there. 
Okay, so we're not seeing the Doom Guard this turn, that's for sure. And the interesting thing as well is that it lets you keep that totem golem for future value, right? So yeah. you can use it for well, the battle it, rage card draw, for and, and the war axe. And also, yeah, th this gives him like a gigantic battle rage. And also, if the Malganis goes into the Tarn, well, the Totem Golem can clear it up anyway. Sure. You know, so it's it does the same job just a turn later, but potentially has a few more benefits. So really nice play actually from Cameron. Love that. So picks up another two drop to curve in nicely. He's gonna try to get himself probably a uh, Yo, like abusive. A soul fire. Flame him. Is Flame him. Why not? You're not gonna yeah. get hurt. You're not getting damaged I love there. That. But you have to play it now, which means you don't play Creeper. Yeah, but Flame him is still better, I think, than a Creeper. It is a five four for yeah. the time being. <laughs> yeah, for now. <laughs> but Gannis is going down. Oh my god, this frothing berserker though. What? Oh my god, what if he battle rages into whirlwind? Uh, this could be oh th honestly. God. There's a chance that this game ends like. Next turn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a very slight chance. It's with Bucks. He's reason. running. Yeah, th this, and there's four card draws. This is rage. ridiculous. And he's going to rage. Oh All you need God. now is an execute to start things off. Oh, Ty Tice has just gone. Okay, so there's double in a rage. Uh, he's good. He's good. Okay. He's good. Wait. Like Malganis Malgan only has three health. Yeah, he, it does. So then it buffs the frotting again to 14. And then with double inner rage, it's uh, 20. It's 23. Can he get four damage somewhere? The axe. Yeah, the, the I guess axe is good. Yeah, axe does it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that card that I, I guess is that's good. I can spot lethal. I spot lethal here. Can Kamlan spot that lethal? Yep. Death bite seems reasonable. Yeah, it looks like uh, 27 health is pretty easy to go through, apparently. I'm correct, right? Yeah, you're correct. It's exactly 27. Yeah. Nice. And Cameron nice job, more Nimsh. than likely is going to spot this. Plus one caster points. <laughs> <laughs> You're now on one total caster point. <laughs> nice. Uh, l let Come me on, Kamlan. Please spot it. We see the lethal. You have seven. Yeah, I think. Yeah. As plus, soon as he's yeah, playing in the rage. He was triple checking. Now he's going to trade into the flame him. No. <laughs> if it was a Wrath Guard, though, that's a lot of yeah. swag points. Wow, that kill. Wow. And uh, Tice right now regretting everything he's ever gone through. <laughs> but still, like, from that hand, that was really close overall. In a, in a I way loved that it, yeah. Got the Malganis and then Doomguard as well. No execute, so it could have gone very differently. If that Peddler had picked up a Soul Fire and the, you know, Tice had decided to just go ahead and kill the Frothing before anything went wrong, it may have been different. Yeah. Also, the uh, the three attack minion in the form of the totem golem coming out from the shredder was actually pretty huge. That's definitely one of the best minions you can get, and you know the, the attack was just enough actually to because he got exact lethal there, so he had to have three damage from Alganis, yeah. and that if he didn't have that trade, then it, he couldn't have lethaled him that turn. So Absolutely, that was pretty pretty massive. If any other like lower attack minion came out, it would have been a lot more I'm, not trouble, but the game would have continued. I'm getting more and more impressed by Kamlan's play. Like not only he brought a, a very interesting build of Zoo, but uh, with this patron he also played really well. Yeah, I feel like the line of play that he took with that totem golem coming out. Uh, you know, I I was talking about trading with the weapon in Malganis yeah. right away, getting out of the board, but the fact that he damaged it got himself a bit more mileage out of that two drop made the game what it was. Otherwise, there was no way to really but get that lethal. Battle that Rage, spot. just, what, you know, the, getting that right. huge Battle Rage off was key. And now, Cameron's going to go into a matchup he's got, probably going to be feeling pretty confident about. He has Patron Warrior versus Secret Piled in. And Patron Warrior, very similar to, to the way it works versus Zoo. The reason it's good is there's a lot of Whirlwind effects, a lot of early removal to stop the Piled in snowballing. And then again, once you get Patrons on the board, um, and if you get them on on turn five, which is like the natural patron turn or the perfect patron turn, before the mysterious challenger comes down, then the, the warrior can just run away with the game because the paladin can't accrue in enough board after that. Yeah, absolutely. But the same strategy for paladin. As I'm for scared sure. here for uh, Kamlan, right? Yeah, with the, with the secret keeper opening into Avenge or like... Maybe just coin minibot into secret keeper Avenge. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Because then you're just not... Good Lord. Yeah, you're not weak to the fire war axe I'm as scared. well. And because... No matter what secret is played, if you if you're the warrior and you have fire war axe, right. you're always going to equip it and attack and try and kill the secret keeper, right? Yeah, you, you like expect double sacrifice. If it's get down, then like fine. You know, like you just deal with it. But you always try. So I like uh, coining the minibot out here too because it's much safer, and then you almost guarantee an event to turn after. Definitely, and this is what you have to do as a paladin: just like threaten warrior from the very beginning of the game and and continue on curve to push. And to ask questions, do you have an answer? But uh, there is a Corsair pickup, which is quite nice overall. Uh, yeah, it'll give him a turn three that is not frothing if he opts for that. It depends really what he gets as a follow-up. Um, I just feel like 
Number one, you don't like Fiery War Axe versus Minibot, but it's also a bit too slow, right? You'd like this turn to be delayed by one notch. Yeah. Uh, if this Minibot would be played on two, you're a bit happier. Yep, and uh, the decision now for Camelon is whether he... I think he's going to equip the Fiery War Axe because it's just too much tempo not to. Uh, and it gives him an easy run into the death bite later on. And um, it's just whether he chooses to attack into the Divine Shield or not, but I think he almost has to. There was like small arguments to maybe not play Fireworks this turn and to conceal the Fireworks and the next turn just play Fireworks into Corsair. I like that. It would have been a play that still curved you out the same way. Would it though? Because then I mean, you'd, you'd have the charge of the Fire War Axe on turn four, so you'd overwrite the War Axe with the Death Bite nine times out of ten, right? Yeah. Most then you lose a charge, so I like just get the War Axe on. Yeah, I like, he I like it for next turn. Too, but yeah. just like you can think about it if it's actually good yeah. for you. Overall, obviously, playing War Axe was a bit better there. Now, another interesting decision to make. Number one, what is that secret? I don't want to get a redemption on the mini bot, so I will try to kill the Secret Keeper. It's probably not redemption. Yeah, I actually like uh, the froth in here, yep. um, because if you kill the secret keeper and it's avenged, the mini bot dies to the. Uh... Uh, well, no. Oh no, it doesn't quite die oh, to the froth. No, but you can kill it off the following turn. Sorry. Yep. All right. But, but the, the mini bot's almost forced to trade into the froth in. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Because you can't really. Oh, leave oh man! Oh, look at this. you can just draw the cog hammer. I just wanted okay, to mention so, that Vice oh is God. missing f uh, free drop, but this. Um. So I have a question. You have two choices here. Either you play around Execute or you play around Death Bite. If you play the Coghammer first, you go face with the damage, right? Yeah. Okay, so he did not go face with I, the damage. I'm a little uh, I'm a little surprised, but yeah, I guess. No, I, I like the trade and, and the I think playing around Execute is, is bad because if he has Death Bite, well he takes another five, right? And he takes five to the face. Whereas if he has Execute, it's one mana gone. But what what if you went face here with the five four? With the 5 4? And what, leave the Froth in alive? Doesn't it have to attack into the. Well, if there is a Whirlwind execute, you're, you're <laughs> just. Whirlwind plus Whirlwind plus execute? Uh, Any rage, maybe? Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. yeah. Okay, I guess there's like a chance that you just get blown out completely, so. I, I, I like play. that play because you just remove a Froth in still, yeah, and, you know, sense. open up a big target for the warrior to deal with. Yeah, he had Death Bite and he had a good follow up with Corsair as well. I, like I, do, I, I do agree with Noxious that it's good considering. That, yeah. that play as well because uh, you are pushing Warrior and uh, at the moment Warrior is at 17. But now the problem is, and this is something we saw actually happen a lot in the EU Championship where Paladin can push quite hard early on sometimes and then just run out of juice and uh, we see now that the uh, the, the juggler is going to come down with a juggler. He's probably hoping he hits that 3-3, three uh, three, three, misses Whoops. and now doesn't do, have. Do you, just, do you just have to tank this? You kind of have to. I mean, the AOE will finish it off. Yeah, exactly. So it just forces a trade into probably the uh, the juggler at this point. Yeah, but uh, it's still a fine trade. Like you don't have to use your weapon at all. You can just the, kill yeah. the juggler and slam it off of and be like, exactly. Pass. This is looking farther. really good for Camelon because even that t you know this board's gonna get cleared up. Uh, he could oh this bad. Yeah, does, actually, I think this is good in a way because this gives uh, this would normally give Thais an option to play um, Blessing of Kings. Yeah, but the low step defense like yeah, guards yeah, yeah. him from that. Like it was unfortunate for Thais because I think attacking into the minion was quite good because then like you really force the trade into the free two and protect your one one in the process. If you do not attack, possibly Death Spite will actually kill the the juggler and the one one. Yeah, yeah I think Hamlin is playing a very good uh, patient warrior. Honestly, so far it's been. Well, like for for a player that you don't hear about too much, I I know the name, yeah, yeah. having seen him play, but I don't think it's a name you see too much around. I I think what's re what's really good now is like his follow up is actually really strong, because again he can just drop a froth in, right, and say answer it, and he's probably going to clear this board because he's going to drop a froth in down. So it's really really nice. Probably go into the um. The, the thing is, from his perspective, challenger is an issue. Like we we're talking, knowing the hands, everything's kind of visible, but I think from. Uh, Calmer's perspective, he's thinking, what about that Frothing Berserker? Like, what do I, uh, I mean, the Challenger. Yeah. What the do Challenger I do against comes. that, right? Like, yeah, but I think with this hand he's actually got, there's not a lot he can do, so he's probably just not too fussed. But, you know, if, like if it happens, he has option. to deal with it, but at the, at unless, you know, depending on what he draws next, of course, like, it looks like he should just go for the Frothing regardless, as it's just too good. Well, there we go. Now, the Acolyte changes things, because he can get additional card draw and still clear the board. Yeah, just so play both actually. Yeah, just play both. Yeah, just like, drop both. Uh, run the. I would actually run the loath Eb into the two two, uh, and just empty just the board. I would inner rage it and take damage, maybe. Would you? I don't all, know. all I'm thinking is the, the inner rage can be really useful afterwards for another acolyte. 
Yeah. True. Uh, I know he has two, but do we, what you want to do is you empty the board for turn six. You do not want a Mysterious Challenger on the board with other minions. You want right. it on its own so you can then just easily yes. deal with it um, afterwards with like a, you know, like one minion attack and you don't have to worry about all and the buffs. Three health and absolutely. Three. Yeah. Um, is it playing around Consecration a bit? Yeah, it is because the Lothev stays at uh, a three. Uh, I mean, it takes one damage from the dead spite when you play this, but if you don't trade, if you use the inner rages instead, then it would actually stay alive. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I think this is fine though, because if he consecrates, he's doing not a lot else, and he has to face tank this uh, frothing berserker <laughs> yeah, with the weapons. So he's probably like, okay, consecrate me. He draws a card, it's most of his turn, so then his follow up's probably hero power, and he has to face tank 10 damage first, which seems okay. Oh, but man. I would still. I, I think if the consecration was here, uh, Thais might be able to come back in this game. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it's like. Tank, yeah, it's definitely a, a, one of his better options. It just still feels okay for Camlin. He didn't really have to play round consecration. Ouch! Is that it? Is that it? Slam if, execute. If you go, trade. you inner rage the three five, then you execute it, then you slam the one two. No, 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 no you'd slam <laughs> the three five, execute, run the three one into right. the. Uh, but you can go free to face as well. Uh, yeah, but you gain two from the trade anyway, right? And you and you gain oh, plus yeah, two sense. from the inner rage from the uh, instead of using it on the minion, you gain plus two and the plus one from damaging the frothing berserker. I'm not saying I'm doing the math and working out where this is lethal, but uh, well, now you it, basically can. Uh, so rage. He's one off, I think. He needs to pick up one more damage. Well, he can he can definitely battle rage because he still has the mana. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, that should be it. Oh, uh, well, when you use it on the frothing alone, and it's good enough. Yeah, second yeah. execute as well. Should be enough. We can win now, right? Yep. Yeah. Quick buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely enough. So again with the frotting, and this means that Scamlin is actually taking the series a uh, three to one. Those frothing Tice. berserker finishes. I mean, Tice is gonna have nightmares about those guys. Wow. And and Camlin advances to the top eight. He advances to tomorrow. So we had three members of Team Flow actually uh, coming into the day, advancing through the Swiss, and now Camlin, the only one from Team Flow, um, defeating. European champion and playing excellent. Yeah, and the guys there just having a quick chat about the game because those were some of the crazier games we've seen as right. well. Like they were, it's not often frothing berserkers do actually keep hitting for that much. And uh, but also to, to Cameron, like really solid play actually. It's the first time we've seen him on stream, I believe. Yeah. Um, and and it's really really solid play overall. And taking down Tice is nothing to be sniffed at. Yeah, Lothar must be a bit sad though because the only uh, the only one of his guys still contending for this is Life Coach. Actually, Tice is not eliminated yet. Tice is going to face 6-0 in the last match of the day. And oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. There's One another game. loser's match. There's a chance that he comes back from this. Yeah. That's right. And Kamlan is uh, one of the big German streamers. Uh, he streams mostly in German, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that he's fo uh, fo following. And basically, all the people who watch him uh, on a daily basis are super happy for him advancing. Yeah, and we can see the bracket there as Kamlan does take the, uh, the winner's spot. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, it's going to be Tice versus Six. So in the loser's bracket, to fight for that final spot left in the top eight. Yeah, they've got a very similar lineup. Uh, the Warrior, however, 6-0 instead of Druid, which should technically be a little bit better for Tyze, given that he is playing the Druid. Uh, it, we have to see, though, what 6-0 is running in his deck, card for card. It's not something uh, you see every day. No Druid or Shaman for him. Mm. Yeah. No Druid and Shaman. Paladin, Warrior. And, war and Warlock. And Warlock. So you would assume this is standard lineup of Patron, right. Druid, and Secret and Paladin. Right, Secret Paladin, pretty yeah. much. Interesting. So it, it will be really cool to see uh, Sixo versus Dice being the last match of the day. And for tomorrow, we'll have a top eight single elimination where the players will have to use the same deck. So we are going to see again this interesting warlock from Camlan. Uh, we'll see interesting warlock from um, other players. Like we have so many interesting warlocks overall. Warlocks are everywhere and different nowadays. It feels like every single build we've seen has been uh, just varied. We've seen Mali Lock. Mali Lock. Ness's mid range. Ness's mid range. Yeah. Three different types of zoo. Yep. <laughs> and we've seen some like polarized hand locks as well. Uh, yeah. Demon hand lock from, from Life Coach. So lots of things. So a lot of great action of Har uh, for Hearthstone tomorrow. But today we still have this one more match for you guys. Six versus Dice. Yep. Who is going to get eliminated? Who is going to advance tomorrow? We'll see in just a moment. So give us some time. We'll prepare the players and be back uh, after a couple of minutes. <laughs> 